I have another stove I want to share with you today. This time it is the Pico Grill 760. This is the largest of the fire pit style stoves from Pico Grill. If you're interested in learning more about this stove, keep watching. All right, before we begin, I just want to thank Bruno at Pico Grill for sending this stove to me so that I can share it with you. So I've been talking about this stove for quite some time now, and I had hoped to use it during the winter time just to demonstrate how versatile a stove can be for winter use. But uh, that opportunity has passed, unless I want to wait till next year, of course. But I wanted to have show this to you while I still had the opportunity before we get into fire ban season here in Nova Scotia. And as promised, this is a big stove. I'll probably say that a few times in the video. This is a big stove, or more, probably more accurately, a fire pit. So uh, I have a meal uh, designed that will take advantage of the size of this stove. So as I go along, I'll be cooking multiple things on this stove at the same time. You'll understand what I mean when I get there. But uh, yeah, so I think probably, obviously, what I need to do ne next is take this stove apart, uh, put it back in its package so that that I can reassemble it for you, show you how it goes together. Okay, so as you can see from the package, the size of the package, this is going to be a big stove. This is folded over in on itself. So, uh, yeah, you'll see what I mean when I when I take this out. So I have cleared a bit of a spot right here down to wet earth, um, only because, well, it, the forest is starting to dry out, and uh, I just want to make sure that there's no leaves or anything that could... Uh, start a, an unintentional fire. I'll take the components out and then we'll put the stove together. So obviously the framework, these two rods that I'm taking out now, if I can get them out, uh, are the rods that will do the support either for the grills or for a pot. I'll demonstrate that in a minute. And this is the stove itself plus the grill. Look how big that is. Holy smokes, this is huge. And what else have I got in here? The skewers. And yep, okay, that's everything. So I'm gonna put the package aside. We'll bring in the frame. Now, the frame will go, yep, that's right. That goes in this direction. Make sure it's on a good steady spot. Uh, Bruno wanted me to point out, and it's a little bit too late in the year to do this, but he wanted me to point out that, you know, this is an excellent stove for use in the, during the winter. So you can get a nice big cooking fire and a nice big heating fire, something that you can sit back from and enjoy the fire, but elevate it off of the snow. Well, I waited a little bit too long to demonstrate that, but what he wanted me to point out is that it's not hard to take a couple of longer sticks and lay underneath the edges of the frame so that the stove doesn't sink into the snow. So you just use those to support it on top of the uh, snow. Okay, so let's open this up. Has the same holes, four holes that you would use to place on top. All right, let's take a good look. This is the last time it's gonna be this shiny. It won't be long before I have this good and dirty. And uh, yeah, so what I like about this right off of the top before anything else is the depth. It has a good deep bowl. And I feel that uh, they're beneficial because you know the, the wood and the coal start to move in towards the center of the room with a little bit of gravity and uh, so that you can kind of concentrate the heat down in here. Maybe a little bit protected from winds, but of course this is still open and, and, and subject to winds. Uh, one thing we'll point out right now, and that is there's a little tiny hole right here. I think you can see that on the camera. That hole is for cleaning the skin. Skewers. After you're all said and done, you can put the skewers through the hole, scrape off anything that you don't want to leave on your skewer. And yeah, so that's what that is for. Okay, so where, what about these two rods? Well, these two rods can be used in two different ways. The primary way you can use them with the grill, and I just want to give you a little bit of a look at them. You can see that there are sliding little tubes on it. If I take that, and place it over the top there and you can see the rod then moves back and forth. Do the same thing on the other side. And I'll give you some more close-ups of this. Then again, the rod moves back and forth. That allows me to take my uh, cooking grate or cooking grill and lay it on top. And I can do it right over the center, over the end, either way you want. 
And same thing goes for the skewers. The skewers, as you know, can act as a pot support, so that will actually support a good sized pot of water right on it. But today I'm gonna to be using it for cooking a sausage. I have search and rescue flying over top. So if it gets a little noisy, folks, it's because there's a helicopter flying over top. That happens quite often out here in the wilderness area. So that's one way of using these two rods at pot supports. The other way is to crisscross them. Same deal. That's the reason why those two little barrel tubes are adjustable, because you can move them across and now at their fullest extension, what you can see happening is I'm creating a pot support right over the center that you can put, well, you can put any size pot. I don't know why you'd want to put a small one like a 750 mil, but today I'm going to be using the uh, 14 centimeter Pathfinder bush pot. So it's a good size pot for doing this with. So that's somewhere that you can put a pot. This will support a lot of weight, 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms is roughly 25 pounds. I'll make sure I put the correct uh, uh, change over on in the notes, maybe on the screen right now, or 10 liter pot. 10 liters of water is the same as 10 kilograms, so that's just how the metric system works. So this will support a fair amount of weight. I have not tried it with cast iron. I expect there'd be no problem supporting a cast iron fry pan on top of this, but a Dutch oven, a uh, full Dutch oven at that, Maybe, maybe not, but you know, it's something that I may try in the future. I do have something quite large that I need, a good size fire pit to use, and maybe this will be the one. It is a pressure cooker meant for cooking over fire, so I'll bring that into a, another video another time. Yeah, so those are the two ways that this can be used. I will be using it, set up the first way I showed you, like this. So I might as well do that right now. All right, so let's go over a few specifications for the stoves before I get my uh, fire started. So as you know, this is made in Switzerland by the Pico Grill Company. The owner is Bruno. This one is designed for up to eight people. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'd bring it over myself if I wasn't doing this uh, video, but you know, a couple of people, eight people at the most, that's all dependent, of course, on what you're doing with it. As with the other stoves from Pico Grill, it is made of the same very lightweight, highly heat resistant stainless steel. And of course, one of the nice things about it is that it can be folded flat like the other fire pits can, so that when you are using uh, one of these grills and they get dirty, then you can close the grill up inside of it so that your pack doesn't get dirty. So one of the nice things, of course, about anything this large is that you can do two or three things on it at the same time and that is my plan today. I have a lunch plan that will require me to grill a sausage, cook some vegetables and make a cheese sauce and I'll be doing that pretty much all at the same time. I will tell you these things do generate a lot of heat, no surprise there, and some of that heat can transfer to the ground below. Now, you know, I am eight inches off of the ground and the ground is wet so I feel comfortable. Even at that though, I will be keeping my bush pot handy full of water just to uh, ensure that if anything does roll off of the side that I can uh, take care of it in very short order. Um, Bruno recommends that it's not a bad idea to take some foil with you or maybe an asbestos mat or something that can be placed underneath of this stove or any stove for that matter just to give you that little bit more level of comfort that you don't have to uh, be so concerned about the heat transferring into the ground or, and causing an unintentional fire because of course nobody wants to do that. One of the other benefits of, the, of a fire pit this size is this is really as large as most fires that you're going to build on the ground. You can actually process the wood to the same length. So here's some lengths of wood that I will be using. That's uh, about 14 inches long. So you can see just how much I can get inside of this uh, fire pit. It's, it's going to be great that way. And being lightweight stainless steel, once we're all set and done and the fire has been has gone out and I've removed any coals. This thing, by the time I've dosed out my coals, this will be cold and ready to pack away. All right, so let's do some, some uh, sizes for this thing. I think I have it all in metric, which is unfolded, but that's all right. I will be putting the imperial measurements on the screen or in the video description as well. So assembled, what do we have? We have a 540 millimeter by 380 millimeters, standing height of 270 millimeters. The weight of the package that I showed you comes in at 1.34 kilograms. So 
Uh, you know, it's got a bit of weight, but look at what you're getting here. Just what you see here, the frame and the pit itself without the rods comes in at 740 grams, which is much more reasonable. Of course, the bag has weight, the skewers have weight, and the grill, uh, the uh, grates have weight as well. So that adds up to the 1340 grams or 1 1.3 four kilograms and as I mentioned I'll be putting everything in the video description so you want to have a quick look there you'll see the English or the imperial sizes I'm going to say this is close to 24 inches maybe a little bit less and 16 inches in that diameter in that measurement there so yeah it is a big fire pit I know I keep saying that but it is a big fire pit okay having shown you the assembly which is virtually identical to the other fire pits from Pico Grill only one thing left to do is to put a fire in here. So that's what I need to do. I've got to go around and find uh, some starter woods and kindling, and then we'll get a fire on for lunch. It's amazing what a little bit of work will do for warming you up, especially on an early spring day. And uh, no wind and a nice bit of sunshine. I had to take my wool coat off. I don't think I'm going to need all that birch bark, but I'll have it. And uh, so it took me a bit of time to find what I needed, the birch bark and the, the little kindlings and some little largers and then split out some other sticks that I had uh, have here. So yeah, now we're ready to go. So what I'll do is I'll get this fire started. And once I do, it's going to have to build up quite a bit and then die down into some good usable coals. But uh, what I'll do is I'll get the fire started and then we'll be able to uh, um, come back when... The fire is ready to cook over. I need any more birch bark on top of that? I don't know. Let's put it on anyway, I guess. Birch bark is amazing, but it is smoky, as are the spruce twigs I just added on. But as soon as I see flames starting to come up, the rest of what I have are all spruce branches. And they'll catch. And by the time this is caught, I should be able to start putting on some uh, heavier wood. Now, I'm not when I say heavier wood, I'm not talking about large four-inch logs uh, split in half or four-inch logs whole. I'm talking about what did I have here? They're two-inch pieces split in half, and some of them quartered. So. Not especially huge, but you need some heavier wood, hardwoods, if you want the cooking coals. Whew, man, I took, I took my coat off. I do have a pot of water here, as I mentioned. I'm going to keep a pot of water handy. I'll be using it for cooking, but I need it to be handy right now just to make sure if I can put my hand underneath. Yep, no heat transferring down yet, but uh, it will. It, I, I've discovered that heat will transfer down through these stoves as they get really hot. That's a hot fire. Holy smokes. I think I'll give that a second before I put anything else on it. Took right off, as you can see. Good amount of airflow. It's this initial phase of a fire where it can be very easy to get out of control uh, especially if you're using the type of kindling that I was I'm using which is uh, spruce or pine or fir browse the little tiny ones that come in from next to the trees you can hear them snapping they they have a tendency to throw sparks so they you know they're great for lighting up quickly but they can throw sparks so you do have to keep an eye on them once you get into using your hardwood it doesn't do that takes it a little slower to light up and get going and then lasts longer but it gives you better heat in that respect cleaner too less smoke all right I have some maple I'm gonna throw some maple on and then it's just a matter of time waiting for uh, some coals to build up and then I can start my lunch and that's when I'll bring it back and I am going to have to put my gloves back on. Okay, so once again, I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. So I think I'll turn the camera off, work on this, and then I'll show you the cream sauce once it's ready to come off of the fire. All right, so I'm just trying to judge where I want to put the grate to put the pot of water on. And I think what I'll be doing is moving it directly over the flame. And that's where if you want something to boil. 
So you can see the size of the, that's the Pathfinder bush pot. The stove dwarfs it, so there's lots of room for doing this. I did add a couple small sticks. There are still lots of coals. And there's only one way to top off a meal like that, and that is with a cup of coffee, right? A good cup of coffee. Get this out. I picked up at Value Village, our thrift store, a uh, GSI coffee press, the smaller version of it, which is really very nice. I can make, well, I don't know, 500 at least mills, two cups or more. And it came with the uh, cup and everything else. So, I have not used it yet. I've had used the cup, but I have not used the press yet for coffee, so we'll give it a go. Oh, of course. Rampage coffee, right? Has to be Rampage coffee. Ground a little coarse, because that's what you want for a French press. Three, four, five. I'm putting in five tablespoons. All right, gloves are going to be necessary for this. So I actually pretty much filled the bush pot up because I need the water for doing my dishes as well. And I have to wait on the fire to go out before I can do much else. Little stick. And I just have to wait a minute or two for that to steep, ideally. Four minutes, that's usually what you wait for a French press. A little longer, probably okay. A little shorter, probably okay. So it's, that's an experience thing as well. All right, then uh, I'm gonna enjoy this cup of coffee. And of course, we'll finish this video up. All right, my coffee is ready. Might be a little hot. I say this every time, but it's, it's true every time. That Rampage coffee never disappoints. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Okay, I have a comment or two that I want to make about the Pico Grill 760. So I'll bring it back into the picture here. Hopefully I'll be able to show you this on camera. Uh, as you can see, the stove weathered out very well. You know, it's kind of dirty looking in the center, which is what you expect. Uh, warping, maybe ever so slight, but that was noticed with all of the stoves after their first use. In fact, the warp actually made it a little easier to assemble the next time I used it because it warped into the position that you want it to be when it's in the uh, framework. So I've got a little cleaning to do with this, but it's just ash, really, that's all it is. And maybe a little bit of sooty tire at the bottom there from from the softwood that I started off with. Okay, so the one comment I want to make, and this is more as much of a safety issue, it's not a difficult thing, but you do need to be aware of it. So this is the grill that I used, and when I showed using the grill, I mentioned that there are those little barrels that sit on the posts for the rails that slide back and forth. Use them. Use them to lock or at least hold in position the grill like that so you can see the barrel is actually coming up through the grill is wide enough to span those bars but not a whole lot there's not an inch on either side maybe half an inch on either side so use those little barrel extensions to hold it in place because what i found nearly happened i didn't fortunately but i found that when it was sitting top of those two bars in the center that I got very close to the edge, and had I moved the pot or, or bumped the, the grill, it would have dropped into the fire, and I would have lost whatever contents I had in the pot, probably ruining the contents and probably putting the fire out. So it's just one of those things, be conscious of when you're using this to make use of those little barrel bolt extensions, if you will. And you can see once they're locked on there, they're locked, they're not coming off after that. Okay. That's the only comment I wanted to make, and it was more of an awareness thing than anything else. Another drink of coffee. Oh man, that's good. 
All right, so that's the last in the lineup of stoves from Pico Grill. Bruno had sent them to me from Switzerland. And uh, there are accessories that go along with this. I think I just put ash all over the side of my face. Happens. Uh, you can go back and look at all the different grills. You can see this one is the largest by, by no doubt. This one is a large fire pit. Too large for what I was doing today, but I wanted to showcase that you could do multiple things on it at the same time. I think I did that successfully with the lunch I cooked. They are all high quality. I caution you again that if you want to get an authentic Pico grill made in Switzerland by Bruno, then you'll have to go through the links that I provide in the video description. And otherwise, you'll end up buying a Chinese copy. Now, Bruno tells me the Chinese copies are pretty good, which is unfortunate that they are half decent because, of course, that just means that more attention or, or more of his market is being drawn away to someone who stole his, his ideas. And sometimes they actually put the Pico Grill name right on it. So I know I've preached about this, but I think it's important if you want to support the originator, the designer, the person who made, designed and made these stoves, then go through the authentic links to get the authentic stove. Here's some good news. I don't want to jinx it, so I won't say too much about it. One of my viewers on a recent video of one of the Pico Grills commented that they showed it to a distributor, and this is in the U.S. The distributor was interested in it and has reached out to Bruno. That would be exciting to know that we have a North American distributor that can handle at least the U.S. and Canada, and uh, that way the import duties will all be taken care of. The shipping would be a lot less expensive. So let's keep our fingers crossed and hope that that deal goes forward. Otherwise, you can still pay the little extra and get one from Switzerland. They're worth it. They really are. Uh, they're a great stove. Okay, what I'll do now is I'll cycle back to the Pico grills that I've already done videos on uh, because each of them I can do more on, such as charcoal and wood pellets and all kinds of different things with each of them. So I'll have videos to come out over the next while showing each of those stoves used again, just a little differently from the original video. If you have any suggestions you'd like to see uh, on that, Please put them in the comments section under this video or any of the other Pico Grill videos. I see them all, the comments that is. And if you have any questions or anything else or any suggestions for stoves that I can try and get my hands on, put those in the comments section below. All the information about this stove, the Pico Grill 750, will, 760, will be in the video description. All right, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled because you know it'll make all the difference. Bye for now. Cheers.